Welcome everyone to the CFO Sermon Watch Report Technical Analysis video for the week of September 3rd through 6th. Now, before I begin, make sure you guys are always reading the report first before you watch this technical analysis video. Remember, I have way more details on what our actual swing trade ideas entail for each single trading week. For example, I provide the exact option contracts that we need to be looking to execute on for each swing trade idea and the exact three point game plan for each swing trade idea using equity. And that is just a small snippet of what the weekly report says. So make sure you guys are not only watching these technical analysis videos. With that, let's take a look at the markets. Now, what's right in front of your screen is the S&P 500 ETF or ticker symbol SPY's monthly time frame. Now, the reason why I want to take a look at the monthly time frame first is that, well, we are nearing the end of the summer season and summer consists of June, July, August, and then September. But right before the summer season began, we had what we usually call sell in May and go away. However, we did not get that, largely due to the fact that we had a nice correction of move that you guys see here on April. And then right after April, sellers just became non-existent. And buyers just stepped up and continued to bid the price up higher until we hit a new all-time high price and that was all off of lower volume compared to April's higher volume candle here. And so with that kind of sell in May and go away not occurring, there is another possibility that we would not be seeing that usual seasonal weakness from September all the way up into the end of October and usually uh, kind of seeps in to the first week of November. So what does this mean? Well, first of all, let's take a look at how the markets did for the summer season so far. So in the month of June, we had a return of 3.20%. And in the month of July, we had a return of 1.21%. And then the month of August, we had a return of 2.34%. And so the total cumulative return for just this summer season so far is 6.75%. That's a very good return so far. And so with August now showing such a strong monthly candlestick, it just seems like with the fact that sell in May and go away didn't happen and the fact that we have such a strong looking hammer candlestick on the monthly time frame for August, it would seem that the markets are not preparing for a seasonal weakness, but in fact, it's preparing for a simple continuation to the upside. That's right. It seems like we're going to push away the seasonal uh, weakness and try to just continue this very amazing bullish momentum month that we had so far in August. And so um, I've outlined a little bit more reasons as to why I think this. So make sure you guys read the report first as always. But this very short trading week, will also provide a very, very good opportunity for buyers to try to continue to make new all-time highs in just this short week alone off of low volume. So basically, essentially, I wanna see a very nice low volume melt up into constant new all-time highs. And I don't think I'm asking for too much because the fact that we ended on such a you know, positive note and a very bullish monthly candlestick. All right, and so now if you go back to the daily time frame, we also have a very, very nice flat textbook bull flag. 
right? So we have a flat resistance level at 563.50, and we have a flat support level at $555. I highlighted this last week as well. And so all we need to do is break over the previous week's highs, which ultimately happened to be last Friday's highs at 564.20, and we can finally retest and potentially break over the current all-time high price of $565.16. I think I've been saying this number uh, quite a few times last week as well. And so it shouldn't be too hard, even based off of uh, last Friday's volume, to continue to move on up higher uh, tomorrow on Tuesday and continue to make new all-time highs and eventually use that 570 magnet level that I've been harping about for all of last week. And the reason why we got those specific call contracts. And if you guys want to know what contracts that I'm talking about, make sure you guys go back into the private Discord and check out the CFO Pro Traders channel. Okay, so I want to keep it very, very simple this week, also because of the fact that we have a very, very, very short trading week. But again, it's a very good opportunity here for bold buyers to continue to move on up higher without the need for very large volume. With that, let's take a look at our first ticker or swing trade idea for this week. XBI. This is the Spider Series Trust Spider S&P Biotech ETF. This is one of the these are one of the major uh, biotech ETFs that a lot of people look at other other than IBB, right? Ticker symbol IBB. Okay? Right here. Right? So these two essentially look similar because again, they're basically tracking uh, biotech uh, companies and stocks. So uh, XBI here, why am I looking at this for this week and why you guys should be looking at this week? Um, well, first of all, uh, small caps have been doing extremely well. And whenever we talk about small caps, biotechs come into light, especially when we're talking about small to mid cap biotechs. All right. And so uh, with a looming potential first official rate cut uh, over our heads, um, biotechs can become one of the major beneficiaries to that official rate cut and potentially further rate cuts down the line. And so as you guys should know by now, markets move in anticipation of the future. Right, And so if we have a future where we're about to have a lower rate environment, interest rate environment, biotechs will have an amazing time getting prepared for that official event in the future. And so we want to be in during the anticipation phase. And in fact, that has already begun because as I've noted in the uh, report itself, Biotechs have seen a huge net inflow of smart and big money buyers. In fact, we have seen one of the biggest uh, uh, net inflows since last year. So if you guys want to know what that number is, make sure you guys go back to the report. So XPI looks very, very similar to SPY. Why? Well, first of all, we have a very nice textbook flat bull flag with the flat resistance level at 102.40 ish and a flat support level at the psychological whole number level of 100 and so far for last for the last two weeks or so uh, the price has been adhering and holding this very very important psychological whole number level of 100 dollars and this is a complete uh, price structure and sentiment change at this level compared to the past year when we had a nice breakout in early June along with other small caps like well IWM which is the Russell 2000 ETF and during this breakout it was very very um, kind of a weak hold of this 100 triple digit share price number so this is a very good uh, change of price structure where we're trying to hold this 100 level and so all we need to see for this week is a simple breakout 
over 102.50 and eventually take out the previous pivot high point sitting right over here. Okay, and that is the 103.08 pivot high point. All right now, once you're able to take over this, uh, move over this previous pivot high point, we have another hurdle to go past, which is this 103.50 level, which can be seen on the weekly time frame. It's a very major level of resistance. And so uh, it can potentially become a first target. However, um, I would want the price to immediately break over 103.50 and then catapult over to at least minimum a retest of 110, the whole number level of 110. All right, so we have a lot of room left onto 110, but that is that is essentially what I want to see as the markets continue to anticipate the very first rate cut, and biotechs will be very very rate cut sensitive at that point. All right, and last but not least, I have A B G O Broadcom. Now we only have two swing trade ideas for this week because again, very very short, but. I would also presume that this specific swing trade idea will also be short-lived as well because this stock has earnings on Thursday. And if you guys already know, and if you guys have been with us for quite some time, I think you guys know what is coming up here for this swing trade idea. So first of all, on the weekly time frame, we have a very, very nice consolidation occurring here for ABGO. And obviously, we had the nice big drop uh, in the first week of August, but we completely and quickly recovered back to the upside. And in fact, during that recovery, we started to make a nice descending resistance level as seen here. Now, on the weekly time frame, it does look a little bit bad that potentially we could be seeing a very elongated morning star candlestick chart pattern, which means, excuse me, not morning star, but an evening star candlestick chart pattern here, where we can see a continuation of a potential reversal to the downside. Since last week, we did make a lower high and a lower low. So that is that one risk. However, even with that risks in mind, okay, I'm still going to be a bit bullish here because of the fact that we do have earnings and this is a major leading semiconductor stock. So now with that in mind, if you go back to the daily time frame, okay, we start to curl a little bit here last week and in order to continue this curling type of action where we can form a nice almost like an elongated U, okay, the letter U, we just need to simply break over 164. This is a daily resistance level. And I love the fact that last Friday, we're able to uh, close over my daily 10 SMA, which is my red line right here, where I'm following with my mouse cursor, by only a few cents, right? And so, uh, the daily 10 SMA closed at 106, excuse me, 162.71 last Friday, and last Friday's close was 162.82. And so if we're able to finally get over and continue to use the daily 10 SMA as a new area of SMA support, we should continue to curl up higher and eventually retest this descending resistance trendline for uh, I guess like a third or four, the fourth time, right? It depends on uh, where you guys uh, think that the trend line has retested, right? All these little pivot points. But for me, I would say it is the fourth pivot, uh, excuse me, the fourth retest of this descending resistance trend line. Now, hopefully, once we do see that retest, we do not see any type of a massive rejection to the downside. Um, but this is where the earnings can come into play because I simply want to see a nice drive up higher into earnings on Thursday, which means that ideally, I would want to be completely out of this position by Thursday, okay? So at least before Thursday's close, since ABGO has earnings after hours on Thursday. 
All right, so I would really want to see if I can get an entry point tomorrow over 164. And there's a possibility that tomorrow we can see we can be seeing a small gap up, maybe even over 164. And if that does happen, I would want the price to come back down to retest 164 as a new level of support and possibly even move slightly lower below 164 and then retest the daily 10 SMA as well so that it can turn that SMA into a new area of SMA support. Okay, so I would love to see that nice uh, retest and potential bounce at either the daily 10 SMA and then the 164 level as well. Okay, so obviously if you do move back down to retest the daily 10, that means we need to also bounce away from the daily 10 first and then we need to cross over 164. And if that does happen, that'll be very, very ideal and I would definitely execute my position. Okay, so we need to be looking out for this one in a very, very detailed manner, right? So again, uh, AVGL has earnings on Thursday. I highly recommend you guys to not hold anything on AVGO, okay, once earnings are out, okay. If you guys decide to gamble, good luck, but I would highly not recommend this uh, for AVGO. All right, so that is it for this video. I know that this technical analysis video was very, very short compared to the other TA videos that I've shown you guys, but if this technical analysis video was very, very insightful, make sure you guys smash that like button down below and if you aren't subscribed yet i don't know why you guys wouldn't be make sure you guys hit that subscribe button but on top of that once you hit that subscribe button make sure you guys hit that notification bell so that you guys know when i have uploaded a new video or when i am live on tuesdays and thursdays of every single trading week good luck and I'll see you all tomorrow morning.